Welcome back to the channel guys. So today we're going to be taking a look at this Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus Starter Kit from ABOX. Includes everything you need to get going here. What we're going to be doing though is taking a look at the individual items that are included in this starter kit. But more importantly, is the price worth it? Can I recommend buying this specific kit? So ABOX did send me this one plus another one for purpose of review. The only difference between the two is one came with a 16 gigabyte micro SD card. The other one came with a 32 gigabyte micro SD card. They also both came in the same style case, but one was clear, the other one is black. I'll show that in a moment. The individual items though that are included in here, I can't really review that. It doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, I could recommend a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, right? But it's really the cost behind this. This company didn't make any of these items, so they're just bundling it up, trying to make something convenient, you know, for people to buy. And I have my thoughts on that, and that's what I want to talk about today. So we're going to look at the individual items. Can I recommend this? All that good stuff. We're also going to touch on setting this up with uh, RetroPie so you can get going with some retro gaming goodness, emulating some awesome old school games. But before we get into that, let's take a look at what's actually included with this thing. So I already have everything unboxed. So first up, we do get our Raspberry Pi Model 3B Plus. I highly recommend these, definitely over the previous model. Um, these do have a few little upgrades versus the previous one um, that makes it to, to me where it's just like, hey, it's a no-brainer. Get the 3B Plus if you can. Um, but the difference is, is that this version has a 1.4 gigahertz 64-bit quad-core processor, um, so it's 200 gigahertz faster than the original. Um, so it's essentially just overclocked a little bit, but definitely a good thing. It does have that extra heat dissipation going on, so not too much of an issue with the, the higher speed there. We do get dual band uh, 5 and 2.4 gigahertz uh, wireless on this versus the previous model was 2.4 gigahertz. We get the 4.2 Bluetooth standard on this versus 4.0 on the previous. We do also get true gigabit Ethernet maximum throughput of 300 megabits per second versus the 10 by 100 on the previous model. This also does have the uh, power over ethernet port or pins right here. Pretty cool stuff. I haven't utilized that yet, but definitely pretty interested in discovering what I can do with that. So that's the main thing you get with a kit like this. Um, the, this kit does include, you know, the, the UK, the produced in UK version. Um, I know they're produced elsewhere but they do advertise on their listing that these ones are produced in the UK and for sure they do say made in UK. So that's a good thing. Always prefer to get these made in the UK. Um, just my personal preference anyway. I guess it really doesn't matter, right? But hey, it is what it is. The other thing you do get a little uh, few foot HDMI cable. I never use included HDMI cables with anything like this, typically because they're just not that great quality. Um, for the Raspberry Pi, it should be fine though. I don't really see an issue, but hey, you do get one included. Um, I believe this is three feet. It's not a very long HDMI cable. For me, not a big deal, but for some people it may be. And yes, just stretching it out with my awesome measuring eyes, this thing is three feet long. So keep that in mind if you're interested in something like this. We also get a couple, uh, Heat sinks, some bad boys here, a little copper heat sink for the top, which is actually 100% unnecessary for the most part, in my opinion, with the Pi 3B Plus, as it already has that heat dissipation going on. Um, you do get another little nice one here, a little brass looking one. I don't know what kind of metal this is, but you could put it on the bottom there. It does have a little Raspberry Pi logo, if that'll focus. I don't know. It is pretty neat. I have a bunch of these. I like them, but hey, they're not really worth much. Maybe to me, as far as value goes, this is 35 bucks. This is maybe a dollar, right? No big deal. The problem with uh, the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus or even any previous version is if you are looking for convenience and you just wanna buy them for what they're worth, which is $35, don't let anybody fool you. Most of the time on Amazon, you cannot find these for $35. Most of these sellers are charging 39, 38, 42, and they don't include anything. Rip off, big rip off. I highly recommend if you're looking for something like this and you just want the board, 
try to make sure you're only paying $35. Don't pay these extra fees for whatever stupid reason these companies are charging. Um, this is a $35 board. If you can get it cheaper, cool, but pay extra only if it comes with extra. That's just my opinion, right? Um, there are a lot of kits that will include like just the board and then a power supply and HDMI cable. And it might be like $10 more. I think that's fair. But to pay $10 more or $5 more just for the board, I think is stupid. Don't do it. So moving on here, right? The other thing we get is a, I believe when I looked at this originally, because I have two of them, it's a six foot power supply. Um, I could be wrong. Oops. It might actually not be six feet, but let me, let me take a gander real quick. Hmm. That's yeah, about five feet guys, but definitely long enough in my opinion, not a big deal. It does have the, uh, little clicky power switch there. Definitely a cool thing. Um, you don't want to use that until you've actually shut down through the system because you could corrupt your memory. Always keep that in mind. Um, this one is hardwired to the brick, so that's a good thing. I hate the ones that you have to plug it in. Um, I like these all in ones, so definitely I do appreciate this. Let me see what the specs are on it. So, um, five volts by three amps. So it's the output is five volts, three amps. I don't know how likely that is. Um, I very rarely see three amp chargers, but Hey, I mean, not rarely, but rarely included with something like this. Most of the time they're just overrated. Um, they're usually less than that and you could run into issues. I have used the other one of this. Um, I have no way of checking that, but I haven't gotten any under voltage or anything or power issues when I've used it. So maybe it is three amps, but I can't speak to that for sure. I can just say using this specific charger, I have had no problems whatsoever. So, hey, that's a good thing. The other thing that is included is this weird little um, micro SD card reader thing. Looks like you pop in your micro SD card on one end, you have USB-C on one, uh, regular USB on the other, so you can pop that into your PC and transfer some files over whatever you wanna do. Um, it also includes, depending upon the kit, you could get, you know, 16 gigabyte or a 32 gigabyte micro SD card. I don't know what that one is, but that's beside the point. It does include noobs on it. So if you just want to get that desktop experience or some other things, you can get going with that, install some things, whatever, right? Also, depending upon the kit, you'll get one of these basic cases that are slightly redesigned to accommodate the Pi 3B Plus, the power over ethernet. So that's a good thing. Very basic kits, um, I mean cases anyway. Not a big deal, I've actually used similar ones before. Sometimes these basic looking cases are pretty cool. I mean, I don't mind them, but they're not worth much. Five bucks, that's the value I give these things or five bucks each, I don't care what you tell me. They're just cheap plastic, nothing special about them. They get the job done, five bucks a pop, no more. Um, because otherwise I'd rather spend a couple dollars more and get an official um, pie foundation case, which those look pretty nice for being a basic case. So these, yeah, I mean, it's okay, but nothing special about them. So with a kit, with a kit like this, um, currently they do have some kind of coupon or something going on. I don't know how long that's going to last for, but the 32 gigabyte, uh, kit is going for 80 bucks. The 16 gigabyte is going for 70 plus you can get 10% off. Now, my problem with that is these companies who are putting these kits out, they really need to adjust their prices uh, comparative to, to what these micro SD cards are actually going for. Micro SD cards are dropping in price drastically, but these kits prices are not. I think that's ridiculous. To piece all this stuff out, you could definitely get it cheaper than what these guys are charging. Um, they're charging for convenience. I mean, let's, let's not be foolish. I'm not trying to be a dick about anything. A box and any other company like it that make these kits, they are charging a premium for all the items you receive. And it seems to be more so a, a convenience thing, I guess you would say. Is that necessarily bad? I don't know. That's up to you to decide. To me, would I buy something like this? No, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> Just being honest with you, I would buy every individual component separately and save some money. But for some people, depending upon what you're looking at, it might be more expensive to buy everything separately because shipping costs, things like that, to where something like this might 
be worthwhile, that's just something you would have to look into yourself. But for the price and the cost of these, I, I personally, that's what I have to ask myself. It doesn't matter if a company sends me a product or if I buy it, I have to look at the cost, the price behind it for what I am getting, would I recommend it? With this, I would not recommend to my core audience unless the value makes sense to you. Like I said, in a specific situation where buying each individual component, like the exact same one. So I'm not talking about buying like a better case or anything like that. But if buying each individual component is gonna add up like shipping costs and crazy stuff like that to where it's gonna be more expensive, then sure, you know, the 16 or 32 gigabyte micro SD cards, definitely enough to get you started in RetroPie, but definitely a lot of us prefer to go, you know, 128 gigabytes or higher. So that's another thing to take in consideration. So that's kind of my final word on this actual product here. This, this, you know, it's not really a box's product. It's just them putting this together for convenience, but in order to, to get something like this, regardless if you're buying this kit, you know, this specific kit or you're buying everything separately like I would do, it's very easy to get up and running with RetroPie. So to get set up, essentially you're just gonna need to go to the RetroPie website, download that base image, um, and there, it will specify specifically if you're downloading it for the Pi 3 or 3B Plus. Download that image. And then from there, you're gonna go ahead and burn that bad boy to your micro SD card. And the way you're gonna to wanna to do that is by using a program called WinDisk Imager. Very simple stuff. You will you know, select your micro SD card, make sure you're selecting the proper one because it will recognize other drives and you wanna make sure you're not overwriting anything, right? So once you do that, you'll navigate to the image that you're gonna to burn to it and then just click right. It'll take a couple minutes and then you will be up and running with the base image. There's no ROMs, no artwork. That's all the stuff you're going to have to do separately. But that's very simple. You know, I can't direct you to ROMs or, you know, fully loaded images, but you, you know, Google's your friend. You could find this stuff. But just to get basically set up by putting that image on the card, you could very easily load some ROMs over Wi Fi or through a thumb drive. It's a very simple process. Um, we've done a lot of tutorials and stuff on that. I am actually thinking about doing an updated guide from beginning to end, getting an image set up for you guys. If you're interested in that, let me know so I can start working on that. But pretty cool stuff. You know, you could play your old school NES, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, uh, PlayStation, a little bit of Nintendo 64, a little bit of Dreamcast on the Pi 3B Plus, and I think that is really sweet. I really don't use these for anything else. Um, I do have a few projects coming up in the very near future that actually aren't RetroPie or emulation based using a Raspberry Pi that I think is going to be pretty interesting. So definitely stay tuned for that if that's your thing. Um, but in the meantime, hey, really do appreciate you guys hanging out with me, taking a look at this product, hearing what my recommendation is, what I think about this kind of stuff. I'm not really for these starter kits unless the price makes sense to you. So thanks for stopping in, smash that like button, make sweet love to that notification bell. And with that said guys, I will catch you next time. Peace out, Bye bye don't forget to subscribe, and BOOM!